Well, good morning on this beautiful Memorial Day. Uh, welcome to all who have been members for many years. Welcome to everyone who may be here for the first time. Uh, everyone is welcome this morning. Are there any prayers this morning? Any announcements? Uh, announcements, I'm sorry. Okay, the, the first hymn this morning is uh, from the New Century Hymnal, number 476, verses 1 and 2. My life flows on in endless song above earth's lamentation. I hear the sweet, the far off hymn that hails a new creation. Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear the music ringing. It finds an in my soul how can I keep from singing what though my joys and comforts die my Savior still is living what though the shadows gather round a new song Christ is giving no storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since love commands both heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? God calls us into community. Let us welcome each other and call God into our midst. Please join me responsively. This is the place and this is the time. Here and now the spirit waits to break into our experience, to change our hearts, to change our lives, to change our ways to make us see the world and the whole life in a new light, to fill us with joy and hope for the future. This is the place, as are all places. This is the time, as are all times. Here now, let us praise God. Please uh, rise so that we may sing the next hymn, Wind Upon the Waters, which is found in your bulletin. Wind upon the waters, voice upon the deep, rouse your sons and daughters, Wake us from our sleep, breathing life into all flesh, breathing love into all hearts, living wind upon the waters of my soul. Showers from the heavens, Water from the earth. 
Rock and hill and garden, wood and desert sand, prairie field and meadow, shaped by love's own hand, love that fills the world around, springing up from barren ground, grow your love within the garden of my soul. Blazing light of wonder, flame that pierces night, burst the dark asunder, fill our souls with light, Lord of glory, fill the skies, make an end to hatred's cries. Be the blazing sun of justice in our lives. Wind upon the waters, rains upon the sand. Praise your sons and daughters, newborn by your hand. Come, O Spirit, and renew all the life that comes from you. Send your wind upon the waters of my soul. When the disciples asked Jesus how to pray, Jesus gave us this prayer. Please join me in this prayer to our Creator, our Mother, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We all know the ways we have fallen short. We all know how we have hurt those near us and those far from us, each in our different way. Let us raise this prayer of confession to our God. Almighty God, you poured your spirit upon the disciples, creating bold tongues. We confess that we hold back the forces of your spirit among us. We do not listen for your word, grace, speak the good news of your love, or live as a people empowered by the Holy Comforter. Hear now our confessions as we turn to you for forgiveness. People of God, hear these words. God, whose goodness and mercy is always there for us, you offer us forgiveness even when we struggle to forgive ourselves. Friends, hear this good news. God loves us and has forgiven us. Amen. The scripture today comes from Paul's letter to the Romans. It was written to a small Christian community in the heart of the Roman Empire, subject to much strife and tribulation. 
there are there's a lot in this passage the bible study this session is studying romans and we have talked about this i want you to hear this as a people who are seeking help from the book of romans chapter 8 verses 18 through 30. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subject to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope, we are saved. But hope is not seen, but hope that is not seen is no hope at all. For who hopes for what they already have? But if, we, but if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit itself intercedes for us through wordless groans, and the God who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love God, who have been called according to his purposes. For those God foreknew are also predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son, that Christ might be firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those who God predestined are also called. Those who God called are also justified. Those God justified are also glorified. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> um, thank you for inviting me to join with you for worship this morning while Reverend Katie celebrates her college reunion. And this is Pentecost Sunday, the day we celebrate the Holy Spirit. It is also May, a month in which God's glory bursts forth to praise his name. This morning, I'd like to talk with you about climate change and the role of the Holy Spirit in the renewal of creation. Now, there's a lot going on in the world right now in the midst of wars in the Ukraine and Sudan, racial and religious hatred <clears throat> and political polarization. It can be hard to focus on climate change. The size and the complexity of the issue makes it hard to know even where to start. My friend and author of many books on religion and climate change, Roger Gottlieb, suggests that we start by cultivating spiritual values of awareness, acceptance, gratitude, and compassion. We are better to do these things than in church, a community in which we are motivated by faith, hope, and love, and always mindful of the Holy Spirit's presence within and among us. Now, the first of Roger's spiritual values, awareness, requires us to both speak and hear the truth about climate change. Among the many news stories <clears throat> that barrage us, one recently caught my attention. The World Meteorological Organization 
tells us that over the past 50 years, climate-related extreme weather events have killed more than 2 million people and had economic damage of $4.3 trillion. Now, the fact that 9 out of 10 of the people killed were in developing countries confronts us with the reality that climate change is also a justice issue. Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations, says, it is now code red for humanity. I like the way Swedish activist Greta Thunberg puts it when she says, act as if your house is on fire because it is. The first of Roger's spiritual values <clears throat> is awareness. But in the face of the dire facts that we need to confront, we need also to cultivate our sense of gratitude. As the Reverend Margaret Bullet Jonas says, God is giving God's self to us in the sun, in the moon, the stars, the wind, the air, the trees, the birds and the pets we love. We live in a sacred world of interdependence and interrelationship. At this time of the year, we're grateful for the beauty of the flowers, the majesty of the trees, and the songs of the birds. Recently, I read about a man who suffered with PTSD and how his therapy dog helped him to heal. The dog was trained to sense his PTSD and would know what to do when he was suffering. The dog would go to him. The dog would press himself against the man to remind him to slow down. Particularly during the pandemic, I was and continued to be very grateful for the companionship of my chocolate lab, Zoe. <clears throat> but awareness and acceptance are a little bit different because acceptance happens at the heart level. We need to feel it. Acceptance includes grieving the people, the homes, the habitat, and the animals that have been already lost. It means being angry about the greed and the indifference that have gotten us here. Acceptance also includes honestly contemplating the challenges we face to find and implement the solutions needed in a world so terribly fractured between races, between political parties, and between the haves and the haves nots. This is really the crux of the matter. How do we accomplish the massive changes needed when we are so divided? Hope helps us to accept. Hope helps us to not get stuck in grief or anger or despair. It means we move beyond acceptance to a compassion that enables us to feel our connectedness and dependence upon non-human creation. Hope helps us to lift up a vision of a renewed creation, a vision of homes electrified by solar, wind, and geothermal energy, a vision of agricultural practices that restore rather than deplete the soil, a vision of an economy that reduces, reuses, and recycles, a vision of a world in which we work together to renew God's creation. Hope allows us to believe these visions will become reality because of the first fruits of the progress that we are now making. Today, Massachusetts has more houses of worship with solar panels than any state other than California. Today, we can heat and cool our homes with air source heat pumps powered only by electricity generated by renewable energy. Today, Massachusetts has already lowered its greenhouse gas emissions 
by 35 percent, more than any of the 18 states who have committed to net carbon neutrality. Today, our governor seeks funds for a program that would provide enough offshore wind to generate enough electricity for more than a million homes. The infrastructure bill signed by our president and a divided Congress includes $240 billion for environmental justice projects, the largest such investment in US history. Pope Francis, in his encyclical on care for our common home, calls upon us to be compassionate to all of creation. He reminds us how Francis of Assisi was particularly concerned for all God's creatures and for the poor and the outcast. In his canticle of creation, he called his fellow creatures, no matter how small, by the name of brother or sister. Francis reminds us that the earth, our common home, is like a beautiful mother who opens her arms to embrace us, or like a sister with whom we share our life. This sister now cries out to us because of the harm we have inflicted on her. This is why the earth herself, burdened and laid waste, is among the most endangered and abandoned of our poor. She groans in travail, as this morning's scripture tells us. In Paul's letter to the Romans, he tells us how Jesus' life, death, and resurrection are gifts of God's love for humanity. Jesus reconciled God to humanity, but God also promises us the renewal of all creation. Just as the love of God has been poured into our hearts, so also its full realization is not fully manifest. This morning, scripture says that suffering is not eliminated by the resurrection life, but it is sustained by the spirit. And since the spirit is at work in the world to bring about a radical renewal of all creation, there is genuine hope for the future. Nature shares in the stress, anxiety, and pain which we ourselves feel as we wait for the promised redemption. The spirit already received is an advance installment of the full adoption we are yet to receive. And when we are weak, the spirit intercedes for us and cooperates with those who are called to the spirit's purpose. According to theologian Jürgen Moltmann, through the spirit, we are bound together with the natural environment. We might describe this as a spiritual ecosystem, for human societies live in and from the recurring cycles of earth, sun, air, and water, day and night summer and winter. So human beings are participants in subsystems of the cosmic life system and by the divine spirit that lives in it. The Hebrew Bible uses wind or breath as images for the ruach or spirit of God. We cannot see it, but we know it's around us, within us, and among us. The spirit blows with the wind that powers our wind turbines. It shines with the sun that powers our solar panels. It moves within the therapy dog that feels a person's PTSD and is part of the love and kinship that we feel for our pets. The spirit blooms with the flowers and flies with the birds. It speaks through our leaders when they enact climate legislation. The spirit is here among us, moving, motivating, 
in energizing us. Now, we may start by cultivating awareness, gratitude, acceptance, and compassion, but we also need to act. The leaders of the UCC, the Episcopal Church, the American Baptist Churches, and the Lutheran, Presbyterian, and Greek Orthodox Churches issued a statement in 2013 called Lazarus Come Out, a shared statement of hope in the face of climate change. In that statement, they committed to encourage our faith communities to engage in public witness about climate change through advocacy at the local, national, and international levels. The key words are to engage in public witness through advocacy. Today, the Holy Spirit calls us to public witness through advocacy. That may not come naturally to some of us, but we can do it with the help of the Holy Spirit, our counselor, our sustainer, and our advocate. Today, we need to hear these words of American poet Clarissa Pinkola Estes. In any dark time, there is a tendency to veer toward fainting over how much is wrong or unmended in the world. Do not focus on that. There is a tendency, too, to fall into being weakened by dwelling on what is outside your reach by what cannot yet be. Do not focus there. That is spending the wind without raising our sails. We are needed. That is all we can know. And though we meet resistance, we move so that we will meet great souls who will hail us, love us, and guide us. And we will know them when they appear. Didn't you say you were a believer? Don't you say you pledged to listen to a voice greater? Didn't you ask for grace? Don't you remember that to be in grace means to submit to a voice greater? One of the most calming and powerful actions you can do to intervene in the stormy world is to stand up and show your soul. Soul on deck shines like gold in dark times. The light of the soul throws sparks, can send up flares, builds signal fires, causes proper matters to catch fire. To display the lantern of soul in shadowy times like these, to be fierce and to show mercy toward others. Both are acts of immense bravery and greatest necessity. Struggling souls catch light from other souls who are fully lit and willing to show it. There will always be times when you feel discouraged. I too have felt despair many times in my life, but I do not keep a chair for it. It will not entertain it. It is not allowed to eat from my plate. The reason is this. In my uttermost bones, I know something, as do you. It is that there can be no despair when you remember why you came to earth, who you serve, and who sent you here. The good words we say and the good deeds we do are not ours. They are the words and deeds of the one who brought us here. In that spirit, I hope you will write this on your wall. When a great ship is in harbor and moored, it is safe. There can be no doubt. But that is not what great ships are built for. Amen.
Riches I need not, nor man's empty praise. Though my inheritance no end always. At this point uh, in the worship service, uh, we offer our prayers for the church and for the world and for each other. Are there any prayers this morning? Yes. Are there any other prayers? Gracious God, creator of all, we raise our hearts in grateful praise for all the beauty that surrounds us. May we learn to respect all of creation as a sacred gift and do what we can to repair the damage we have caused through our consumerism, greed, and carelessness. Grant us an ecological conversion so that we can leave our next generation with a future full of hope where there is enough for all Lead us in your way with hope for justice in the future and confidence that you will give us what we need to do the work you set before us. Almighty God, we give you thanks for all those who have served and given their lives for their country or their community in times of war and times of peace. May their courage inspire us May their dedication live on in us, and may you ease the grief of those who mourn for them. Loving God, who formed all humankind as a family to live in harmony and peace, let your church demonstrate to the world the power of the gospel to destroy divisions so that there may be no barriers of wealth or class age or intellect, religion or sex, race or color, so that all may be equally your children, members one of another, living together in peace. Merciful God, you are afflicted by the sufferings of your people and are full of tender mercy. We are mindful of our brothers and sisters in this congregation and throughout the world, including Kelly, who are sick or grieving or hungry or lonely or suffering in body, mind, or spirit, heal, comfort, and sustain them. Give us the strength 
to reach out to them in their need. At this time, our offering will now be received. We have many ways of giving to the church for our many programs. Um, if you'd like to donate digitally, you can scan the QR code. You can also give at our Venmo address at MHCC4200, and you can text the word GIVE to our number printed in the bulletin. Please rise as we receive the offering. <laughs> Please join me in blessing the offering. God of the bold spirit, bless, bless these, these gifts we lay before, before you, that, that they, they may be used to comfort those in need and spread, spread the good news of your, your everlasting, everlasting love. love. Amen. Amen. Please join me in our closing hymn, Touch the Earth Lightly. It is in our New Century Hymnal number 569. Touch the earth lightly, use the earth gently, nourish the life of the world in our care. Gift of great wonder, ours to surrender, trust for the children tomorrow will bear. We who endanger, who create hunger, agents of death for all creatures that live. We who would foster clouds of disaster, God of our planet, forestall and forgive. Let there be greening, birth from the burning, water that blesses and air that is sweet. Health in God's garden, hope in God's children, Regeneration that peace will complete. God of all living, God of all loving, God of the seedling, the snow and the sun. Teach us, deflect us, Christ reconnect us. Using us gently and making us one. You are God's people gifted with dreams and vision. Upon you rests the grace of God like flames of fire.
love and serve each other in the strength of the Spirit. May the strong arms of God protect you. May the deep peace of Christ be with you. And may the power of the Holy Spirit strengthen you in every way. Amen. Please join me in our parting song. It's verses 3 and 4 of number 476. When tyrants tremble sick with fear and hear their death knells ringing, when friends rejoice both far and near, how can I keep from singing? In prison cell and dungeon file, our thoughts to them are winging. When friends by shame are undefiled, how can I keep from singing? I lift my eyes, the cloud grows thin, I see the blue above it, and day by day this pathway smooth, since first I learned to love it. The peace of Christ makes fresh my heart, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am Christ. How can I keep from singing? Thank you.